Okay, so here is the third technique, and this is sort of a finishing technique. This is where I pull out maybe some smaller stencils. This is really small, but this is a new one that I really like by Crafters Workshop. I think it's called Gothic Music, maybe. I pull out some smaller stencils, and what I'm going to do is just create accents on my pages. So I can pull out different stencils, like in this case. doesn't matter because I'm not going to put the whole print down and I'll overlap these side parts so all I have is you know try and get more image on there but you get the idea and then one more stencil I didn't pull out that many stencils I have about nine million stencils because you know stencil addict and all okay so here is a bunch of different stencils and now what I'm going to do is take the, the darker colors and lighter colors so I'm going to take black because these are going to be my accents so for example I'll just do an entire one in black you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about and I still have my white it'll be interesting to see if this little this one works because it is a little intricate and I'm doing what we did in the last section where I'm just getting the paint down just kind of smooshing it in to that stencil image and now what I can do also oh, I gotta brayer that off brayering off very important I could also take my stencils and do the same take, do the same idea. So here's one that is a perfect example. It's, it had the background, and then I just did that stencil technique that I showed you in technique two. So technique one, technique two, and here's number three. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to peel these off because the truth of it is the negative has much more surface the idea is I want little smaller images you'll see what I mean I'm going to take this and I'm just going to dab I'm just going to put some imagery in different spots like that because all I want to do is add some accents accent images and I don't want to overdo it so that's looking pretty good. And then I might just put that one away and grab another one. Now I can still do that with any of my prints. I can take this as a background print. I could do the same thing and build up my layers that way. Like that, just take, add a couple of images, put it aside. Here was one that was just the stencil negative, I believe and my paint's getting dry. So as I'm doing this, I'm picking up from different areas. You can, I can see on my plate where the paint is wet and where it's starting to dry. But you're getting the idea. I'm coming along and just adding a bunch of different imagery. Hmm not feeling it on that one here's a good one so where I'm putting now my paints getting dry I'm not really picking that much up still picking up a little bit maybe just a little bit of scuffing more than anything but that's pretty much it so this one can go back to the pile but you see what I what I meant is I'm adding imagery now where I use the black was on the lighter print Although this is fairly dark, but this one had the lighter on top. So now what I would probably do with this one is I would take this one and do the same thing with different stenciled images or the same, either one, but I would do it with white to give that contrast. This is getting kind of busy, but you have to remember, this is still going to be a background. Like this is still going to be a background of an art journal page or a cover. And so I'm still going to put other images on top of it. So it's okay for it to be too busy. So now I have this 
And what I might do is come in with, because it's white, or it's black rather, I can do anything. I could come in with a color. I could come in, I'm gonna come in with gray and I'm going to do a pull-up print because this paint is dry. I'm really not gonna get anything else out of it at the moment. So I will just put a nice layer. And you can see what the, you know, I wanna make sure it's covered. That was my problem with not pulling up that dried paint in the corners was I hadn't put paint along the edges. So, and I do wanna pull these up before they stick glue, see? But all I do, all you have to do is stick that in, stick the stencils in water and that'll come off. So I'm just going to take a piece of cardstock, one of my background cardstocks that I had that I like to put two images on, and I'm going to put that down. And again, I'm going to rub fairly firmly, and then, because the idea is the wet paint is going to pick up that dry paint, but I need for that wet paint to dry onto the cardstock to get the wipe up print. And that should be enough time. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. I still didn't get all of the, the crusty bits, but again, that's okay. It's just layers and layers of paint there. Just pulls up. Look how cool that is. Wouldn't that be neat if you took, use that as a background for like a, one of those Sizzix houses? I mean, cut that out of Eileen's Sizzix house die. That would be a fantastic sort of wall foundation. So I'm going to pull out some stencils that have smaller images because that's what I like to also use for these. And then the other thing that's great to have, and I don't know, this is an older stencil. This is TCW 470, but Really, any stencil, and I know they'll still have them, even if they have newer ones that have a ton of imagery. You know, this is a Julie Fenfei Balser stencil, and it's just got all kinds of different imagery. So these ones are great to use. In fact, let me use this one to start with. Because I can, you know, basically put the whole pattern on there. But, I mean, I won't for fun's sake. And... My white is getting a little low. I'm going to show you a trick. This is pretty much, I can't get any more paint out of it from this standpoint. So what I'm going to do, waste not, want not, I'm going to push the paint off the lid, off the top. And I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just cut that tube. And then I can go in with a and I can put the paint on that way and this way I'm using all my paint rather than throwing that good paint out I still have a bunch in the top but I think this will be enough for now Let's see so I hope you had a good holiday I hope as I said, it's January 2022. I'm just hoping and praying that we get coronavirus under control and we can start enjoying life a little more. Mm -hmm. All right. So I do have a lot of paint still on this. I'm just going to put that there for now. So I have all these images. And now I'm going to take that same print. Of course, now I've lost it. Okay, this one that had a lot of the dark. And I'm just going to come in the other areas and add some white. And I can overlap on the black as well if I want. But the idea is I'm just holding the paper so that only parts of the paper touch the plate. 
and see what's happening. I'm brightening that back up by adding that white. And what I'm trying to do is go in where I have less imagery. I mean, I like connecting them. So, you know, here maybe there's a little, or sep trying to separate the white from the darker areas. And then, yeah, I like that. So that one's done. So I put that aside. That's in the done pile. And again, I can still come back to, how about this muddy one we did? These dark ones. These are, that's just a background page. I can do that with this as well. Same thing. And you'll see what'll happen. Well, that's not a good example because there's already a lot of white there. Oh, here's, here's a good one. This is quite dark. There we go. Look how fun that is. And again, maybe on this one, I only want to pull a couple of images and then I can come back in with another color. It doesn't have to be white or black. I just sort of like starting with white and black and then going from there. I'm trying to find. That was a good one that was kind of muddy. So if I come in, muddy mainly because we used brown, which is the color of mud after all. But if I want to come in and again, brighten that up a little, all it takes is some fun images. You can still do this to refine it with a stencil, a dauber, but look how quickly I can get really crisp pictures on there. I have nowhere to put these, just one sec. Okay. And that paint is a drying, so I'm gonna try and move a little quickly. Here's another good example that could use some brightening up. And it just gives it that super pop. Now you notice I am able to get a couple of the same images because again, there's layers of paint on there. And as I go, the image is getting less crisp and less This is a good one too. Um, it's getting less crisp and I'm getting, I'm pulling up less paint, but it's still, I'm still getting an image. That's a fun one. I might just, oh, I should have just, this would have been a good one to just put the entire image on and just pull that whole print, or that whole stencil up. So I do like that. And that's, that's how you continue on. So what I want you to do is take some of your more finished backgrounds. This is a perfect example. And get some stencil. Let me do another one I want to show you with an overall stencil. This is a great stencil as well. This is... I should have just been giving you numbers, but let me see. Maybe I'll put... I'll see if I can put links below. Oh, it's hard to see. TCW361. 361. These are really old. I've had these for, oh my goodness, 10 years at least, I would say. But if you can't find this one and you like this pattern, type of pattern, find another one that has, you know, the same sort of thing going on. Or there's there's so many stencils out there. Don't be super picky about, oh, I have to have that exact same stencil. No, you really don't. I know you think you do because I'm the same way. <gasps> I have to have that exact image. Just if you can't find it, find something similar. Look at the imagery. See what else that you liked about this one would work in another one. It'll be okay, but I understand the struggle. The collector... I call it the collector. Now that's pretty good. I got a lot of that paint out of there. I'm going to throw that out. Trying to not keep everything. Hoarders unite. Except we can't because we don't have any room. Because our craft rooms are full of stuff. And why don't I? Another thing I can do is if... You know, you can always add a little bit of white to that as well. It's fun. It's kind of hard. This is white. That's all right. It makes it look snowy and bleak. A bleak background. Oh, I love that. Not going to worry about that one right now. I 
again, it's, I'm running out of places to put things. You will discover when you start gel plating that you end up with papers, piles of drawing papers everywhere. So now I'm gonna just, again, do the same thing and just pull up, but how fun is that? In just a couple of places. I'm gonna have stencils sticking here for days. start and just keep going become this can move away so fun all right, I'm going to just keep going, and I will probably set this to music. So I'm going to pull out some stencils that have smaller images because that's what I like to also use for these. And then the other thing that's great to have, and I don't know, this is an older stencil. This is TCW470, but really any stencil, and I know they'll still have them, even if they have newer ones that have a ton of imagery. You know, this is a um, Julie Fafen Balser stencil and it's just got all kinds of different imagery so these ones are great to use in fact let me use this one to start with because i can you know basically put the whole pattern on there but i mean i won't for fun's sake and my white is getting a little low i'm going to show you a trick this is pretty much i can't get any more paint out of it from this standpoint. So what I'm gonna do, waste not, want not, I'm gonna push the paint off the lid, off the top, and I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and just cut that tube. And then I can go in with a, and I can put the paint on that way. And this way, I'm using all my paint rather than throwing that good paint out. I still have a bunch in the top, but I think this will be enough for now. Let's see? So I hope you had a good holiday. I hope, as I said, it's January 2022. I'm just hoping and praying that we get coronavirus under control. And we can start enjoying life a little more. Mm -hmm. All right. So I do have a lot of paint still on this. I'm just going to put that there for now. So 
So I have all these images. And now I'm going to take that same print. Of course, now I've lost it. Okay, this one that had a lot of the dark. And I'm just going to come in the other areas and add some white. And I can overlap on the black as well if I want. But the idea is I'm just holding the paper so that only parts of the paper touch the plate. And see what's happening? I'm brightening that back up by adding that white. And what I'm trying to do is go in where I have less imagery. I mean, I like connecting them. So, you know, here maybe there's a little, or sep trying to separate the white from the darker areas. And then, yeah, I like that. So that one's done. So I put that aside. That's in the done pile. And again, I can still come back to, how about this muddy one we did? These dark ones. These are, that's just a background page. I can do that with this as well. Same thing. And you'll see what'll happen. Well, that's not a good example because there's already a lot of white there. Oh, here's, here's a good one. This is quite dark. There we go. Look how fun that is. And again, maybe on this one, I only want to pull a couple of images and then I can come back in with another color. It doesn't have to be white or black. I just sort of like starting with white and black and then going from there. I'm trying to find. That was a good one that was kind of muddy. So if I come in, muddy mainly because we used brown, which is the color of mud after all. But if I want to come in and again, brighten that up a little, all it takes is some fun images. You can still do this to refine it with a stencil, a dauber, but look how quickly I can get really crisp pictures on there. I have nowhere to put these, just one sec. Okay. And that paint is a drying, so I'm gonna try and move a little quickly. Here's another good example that could use some brightening up. And it just gives it that super pop. Now you notice I am able to get a couple of the same images because again, there's layers of paint on there. And as I go, the image is getting less crisp and less. This is a good one too. Um, it's getting less crisp and I'm getting, I'm pulling up less paint but it's still, I'm still getting an image. That's a fun one. I might just, oh, I should have just, this would have been a good one to just put the entire image on and just pull that whole print, or that whole stencil up. So I do like that. And that's, that's how you continue on. So what I want you to do is take some of your more finished backgrounds. This is a perfect example and get, some stencil. Let me do another one. I want to show you with an overall stencil. This is a great stencil as well. This is, I should have just been giving you numbers, but let me see. Maybe I'll put, I'll see if I can put links below. Oh, it's hard to see. TCW361. 361. These are really old. I've had these for Oh my goodness, 10 years at least, I would say. But if you can't find this one and you like this pattern, type of pattern, find another one that has, you know, the same sort of thing going on. Or There's, there's so many stencils out there. Don't be super picky about, oh, I have to have that exact same stencil. No, you really don't. I know you think you do because I'm the same way. <gasps> I have to have that exact image. Just if you can't find it, find something similar, look at the imagery, see what else that you liked about this one would work in another one. It'll be okay, but I understand the struggle. The collector, I call it the collector. Now that's pretty good. I got a lot of that paint out of there. I'm going to throw that out. Trying to not keep everything. Hoarders unite except we can't because we don't have any room because our craft rooms are full of stuff. And why don't I... Another one. 
another thing I can do is if, you know, you can always add a little bit of white to that as well. It's fun. It's kind of hard. This is white. That's all right. It makes it look snowy and bleak. A bleak background. Oh, I love that. Not going to worry about that one right now. Again, it's, I'm running out of places to put things. You will discover when you start gel plating that you end up with papers, piles of drawing papers everywhere. So now I'm going to just, again, do the same thing and just pull up. But how fun is that? In just a couple of places. Good start. This can be the way. So fun. All right, I'm going to just keep going and I will probably set this to music. So now this is the leftover that I have. And again, it is pretty much dry. So the last technique I'm going to leave you with is I can take, and because this is white, I want to take maybe a bit of a darker. Look how vibrant that is. Let's do this just for fun. Woo. This is called, what is this? Fluorescent pink. Although it does, it looks more like fluorescent orange. So I think what I'm going to do, I don't know what orange goes with what. Orange and red. Not to make mud. You can already see how this is a thinner paint. Maybe this might be fun just to do some build up some more backgrounds. So I hope you've had fun. I hope you've pulled out your gel plate and a bunch of paper and gotten jiggy with it. Use, oh, this is a metallic. Yeah, let's use this. That might be cool. I think I need a third color. Maybe not. Could be interesting. Let's see what we get. Let's see if I can find a card stock. So again, this one's a little wet still. One of the things I like using my these double-sided card stock is for a page in a journal. So I will, because they're nice and solid, because it's cardstock plus acrylic paint, so they stand up really well as a background page. And again, if you go to my blog, you're going to see where I built my journal, and I used, I'm going to use these prints from this session. So not quite ready, not quite cooked. What I'm looking for 
is I want, again, it's like a, pull, a wipe up print where I'm looking for the paper, the paint to dry to the paper so it pulls up those dots. And oh, I've had a little bit of success, but there's still some left, which is still kind of cool. So this is interesting. And again, it has to do with paint. This paint was a thinner paint. This paint was thicker. This paint, the purple probably dried quicker. It was also metallic. It probably dried quicker. This paint is still kind of wet. So that does leave the opportunity to pull this up as well. Maybe I'll put that on here that paint should still yield and if not as I said yeah, see, kind of fun that paint if not it'll come up at some point and I'll get some kind of interesting print out of it all right let me pull out some of my they're still wet but just to give you an idea of some of the prints. Now, the last thing I'm going to leave you with is something I like to do. This one's really wet. So I'm going to pull that one. Is to leave a shadow. Is to um, when I finish a background like this, one of the things I like to do is scan it. My favorites. I don't scan all of them because when you print make with gel press you end up with so much like you see I've literally spent an hour uh, I haven't spent that much more time than videotaped okay so whatever this videotape however long it is add another 20 minutes maybe but you'll see the stack of prints I got from this session so one thing I'll do with some of these prints that I like, this would have been a good one to put the white dots on because it needs to be brightened up to give you an idea. I do have this. Maybe I can. The only thing is this is a lot of co coverage. So we'll see if I get It's also a little dry. No, look at that. Oh, fun. But anyway, I will take these prints and I will scan my favorites and then I can print them out again if I just don't feel like pulling out my gel press, but I want some of my favorite prints or I want to do a cover or, you know, whatever. I want to give one of my friends a little bit of my art. I can just print out a, a piece of gel one of my pieces that I've already done. And that's just kind of a fun way of working once and having a second. It's just a fun way of working once, but having your work sort of pay off for you in that I've got, you know, I'm using, I'm duplicating myself. So it's kind of a fun way and it's fun to look back to and see some of your different prints. That was probably a little much, but you're getting the idea. So go have a play. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I would love it. If you enjoyed this video, I'm going to be doing more gel press videos. Subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. And I will put my other social media below so you can. I post almost every day on Instagram. And again, if you like reading, I have a blog where I do my step-by-steps. And there's years and years and years of projects on that blog. I've been a member of the Eileen Hull sign team for a number of years and other teams. So I hope you get a chance to get inky today. Have a great start of the year. Have a fun January. Let's get it. Bye. Bye.